All right, welcome to No Nodes. Number three, we're going to go into the frame hole node. Do you truly know the frame hole node? Well, let's go ahead and see. Uh, so I got this script here. Again, this is all available through my Patreon if you're interested. Um, it's a zip file. Uh, so here we have just a camera. So I did a quick animation here with frames 1 to 30. I have my timeline. If you hit S for settings, you can see I have it set to 1080p just for the heck of it. So you can see if I just tab into my 3D view and hit play, you can see I have an animated camera from which I can just, you know, connect to and lock to and back up. And you can see some crazy, uh, crazy animation there. So let me unlock to that, go to the default. So you have this animation in this mode here and you have frame holds. So frame holds can work both for the 2D footage and for holding cameras as well. So you can take a frame hold here and just go ahead and put your cursor to it. And I have it set to first frame zero and increment zero. So as you can see, it's basically holding to frame zero. If I put this to frame 15, uh, the animation that was at frame 15 will hold through the entire shot. If I put it to 30, guess what happens? It goes to frame 30. Now, what a lot of people don't see is this increment thing here. So if I'm at frame one and I simply move the increment from zero to one, it goes back to the first frame. Well, what does that mean? Well, you've basically overridden the frame hold and now you're dealing with the increments of the movement of the actual camera here. So in other words, every frame is holding for the frame. You can see the math down here. It's 30 plus N times one, right? So if the frame number is uh, one, Go ahead and see here. So you got like one times one plus 30, right? So I'm going to put this back to one. As you can see, we still have first frame one. It doesn't matter, honestly. You can see if I put this first frame to any number, it's not going to make any difference, okay? The increment is interesting. So if I put this increment up to three frames, what happens now is it holds, it's holding the camera for three frames. So one, two, and then the third frame, right? So if it's the first frame is zero, so we can actually set this to first frame one. So what that means is here's the first frame. It goes for th holds to that frame for three frames, one, two, and three. Fourth flame frame goes to the actual fourth frame. So it's a bit of a jump, as you can see here, versus if I disable this, there's this transition between the, the uh, frame one to four. But if I hold it, it holds at frame one for, for three frames, jumps to frame four then holds for three frames, jumps to frame, uh, in this case, seven. Uh, so you can see it's always where it is in proper temporal time. It's just holding uh, basically right here. So again, you can see if I just play it through. So if you think of the movie, you know, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it's almost like that form of animation where you're getting doubling up of frames or whatever. Um, so again, kind of weird. And you can take a look, if I take a look through the camera and lock to it. You know, I can keep changing this up so that it's only five frames. So, yeah, so you can see if I play it through. Let's see here. So again, I might want to put my viewer to it. And is it well, something weird going on here? I'm seeing through the frame. I guess the viewer itself doesn't actually show the output, but let's go ahead and just pop back out of here. We can see that the camera is not physically moving. See that? So in this case, we've got the first frame being one and the increments being five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then a, a frame here. So again, but apparently looking through the camera, locking to the camera, it just shows the original camera footage here. So even if I have it updated to the latest view, I'm sure someone will write in the comment section to what to fix that for. All right, so footage hold, um, as you can see, I'm going to take a look at this. It's just the footage. So we go from 2D to 3D mode by the tab key. So you can see the tab key going back and forth. But I have just an output roto here with RGB information, RGB information, where I just have a ball that's been animated two-dimensionally or a roto shape that's been animated here. So you, you guessed it. You know, if I come in here, whatever frame I have this set to, so if I set this to frame 15, it's going to hold it on frame 15. If I put this to frame 30, it's going to put it to frame 30 for the entire duration. So we'll talk about the practical application for this in a minute. So I'm going to put my first frame to 1, 
And then of course you can do the same thing, three frames, so you can see that it's holding for three frames and then continues on with the animation. So again, there's like the, again, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse uh, reality there. Um, so anyway, all right, so let's go, let's talk about application. What is this commonly used for? It's used for a lot of things, uh, creating panoramas. Um, it can be used for most likely uh, doing cleanup work via uh, actual camera solves and so forth and putting, kind of projecting on cards and doing cleanup work. So here you can see if I put this to this shuffle node here, which is just simply shuffling in a uh, white background, I have a scanline render render here of a camera animation with some, you know, checkerboards to allow for areas to be tracked. Okay, so simple animation. Then I come into the camera solve where I did a track and a solve and I got all these points which gave me this point cloud. So if I go look at my scene here, you can see I have this point cloud information here and the camera movement. And from this solve, I created a model builder node from which I made a card. So you can see the card here. And again, I'll have other lessons on model builder node, how I did this. Uh, I just built a, a card in there. From here, the model builder node has a couple options here and we could say projection. It'll be whatever frame we're sitting on. So I'm probably gonna wanna do my cleanup projection facing as, as perpendicular to the area I wanna clean up, which will only be within the vicinity of this area here. And I will go ahead and say bake. So I'll go ahead and say bake on that. And we are at frame 26. So it shows frame 26, as you can see here. And it has a couple nodes here. This is what I call the hamburger sandwich. Um, so you have the top bun and the bottom bun. And within it is the meat. So it gives you a nice little postage stamp, which is nothing more than show you what you're dealing with. So as you can see, the frame hold is holding for frame 26 throughout the entire process. So again, I'm putting my viewer to the posted stamp. You can see it's, it's, it's staying on there. The camera also has another frame hold that's cloned, um, which again, one is holding an actual camera animation, just like we did earlier, and one is holding an actual footage animation at frame 26. So at this point, I can go ahead and create a roto paint node, throw that in and do a horrible cleanup job on here within the vicinity of where that's uh, that square that I created because that's what's going to be projected and I will come over here and do a clone work and we're gonna do a horrible clone work job so get ready to cringe so I'm gonna do just this this nasty nasty clone job Let's say the director said I want that middle square gone right so I'm gonna kinda do a terrible clone paint job in here like this. I'm not going to include, I'm not going to talk about the need for adding grain or edge blur or another roto to cut this out. I'm just showing you what this is used for. So now that we have done that, we can see that it only lasts for one frame. So I'm going to grab all my clone strokes and then come over here to the lifetime and set this to all frames so that every single paint stroke says all. You can see that it's holding on for all. Now this work has been, uh, been done. We now are going to use a project uh, 3D application to apply this to a material. So we're going to use this uh, 3D card, which is right here. So it's a, it's a 3D card through the model builder node. We are going to take that and apply that. So we will just create a dot node, bring the, that 3D card down. So I'll put it down here. And this is going to apply that to the card. So let's put my viewer to it. And you can see if I put the render to textured, and let me just pop out of this display mode here. So you can see what's going on here in the, the works of it. We have a frozen camera that's gonna be used to project the actual, onto the card, that, that image. It's like a movie projector projecting onto the scene here. And that's gonna actually uh, be in there. So th we should see a render here in a minute. Uh, display. I'm going to set this to textured so you can see it. So you can see within the texture, you, you can see it's there. So we're just going to re re-photograph this card and merge it onto our original plate. So with that, we're going to need a scanline render node, which is technically like a, just a rendering tool. And I'll put my object, which is my scene. And the camera I want to use is not the camera uh, that's holding, but I want to re, uh, you know, 
rebuild this scene with the camera that's not on a frame hold. So I just go back a step here. So now if I, t I put my viewer to the scan line node and hit the tab key, you can see what we have here is an Elfid version of our thing. Now we could use edge blur on this if we wish. Um, we could add, uh, so I could just take some edge blur. This is really hacky what I'm about to do here. So you can see I've kind of blurred the edge. The scan line render node also has anti-aliasing. It also has samples for motion blur as it moves through the scene. Then you can add some grain which obviously you'd want, want to do this uh, probably in the unpre-multiplied state, but I'm just going to throw this throw this uh, in there real quick, and I'll bring the grain really down. Actually, there's no grain in 3D already, so what am I doing? Um, so I, I'm going to just go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to hit M for merge and put this as the A for a top. So we have this that's going to sit on top, and the B for the background is going to go all the way back to the original footage from which I will make a nice little dot node so you can kind of see what's going on maybe I'll back this up a little bit because it is getting a little bit crowded in here so now we have we just kind of slap that on top so this is the before this is the after it is imperfect but we have a cleaned up shot here with motion blur and if need be grain um, and that's how it's commonly used so again frame hold is basically again f holding this camera so that it projects this image onto that card like a movie projector onto a screen and then we re-photograph it with the non-hold camera and voila you have clean up so again there are other tools a lot uh, frame holds are also used in uh, uh, stereoscopic workflows for uh, again creating panoramas um, there's a lot of different tool sets for that i'm going to wait until i get into those different areas for other nodes uh, so I'm not going to share that completely with you today, but again, that's basically it. And if you want to, again, download this stuff, you can uh, subscribe to my Patreon and uh, support the uh, website.